Well, we most definitely need a bit of populism tonight as we see the corruption and the lies of the establishment metastasize on multiple fronts. We've got it all covered tonight. The truckers' convoy, Biden's Russia war games, and, of course, the bombshell that landed on the Democrats and their media servants overnight. New charging information from the Russia hoax special counsel, John Durham. After all those years of sanctimonious lectures about Russian hacking and election interference and undermining our democracy, it turns out it wasn't Russia, Russia, Russia. It was Clinton, Clinton, Clinton. They were the ones who did the hacking. It was the Clinton campaign, including the present national security adviser and the man now leading Democrats' election integrity efforts who illegally meddled in an election. It was you, Hillary Clinton, and you, Jake Sullivan, and you, Mark Elias, who undermined our democracy. Can you believe these people? Just listen to how they talk. His final target is democracy itself. One of the things that we were trying to explain to the press was this isn't just about hacking and leaking emails. This is about a larger information effort by the Russians. You have a president who, rather than reassuring the American public in American democracy is trashing American democracy. Every day he's trashing American democracy. But now we know, thanks to these documents, the factual background attached to a motion filed by special counsel John Durham as part of his indictment against former Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman, that the Clinton campaign paid a tech firm to, quote, mine internet data to establish an inference and narrative tying then-candidate Trump to Russia. In Durham's words, this included, quote, non-public and or proprietary internet data. What does mining non-public and proprietary data mean? It means hacking. It means spying. And look at their targets, according to Durham. Quote, internet traffic pertaining to, one, a particular healthcare provider, two, Trump Tower, three, Donald Trump Central Park West apartment building, and four, the executive office of the President of the United States. Yes, you heard that right. They hacked not just Trump Tower, but the White House after Trump became president. They hacked the White House. These people who pose as defenders of democracy. How is that even possible that the Clinton campaign hacked the White House? Well, because they're part of the establishment. They hired a firm that already had a top secret contract with the White House. Here's Durham describing the person the Clinton campaign paid to do their hacking. He had come to access and maintain dedicated servers for the executive office of the president as part of a sensitive arrangement whereby it provided domain name system resolution services. He and his associates exploited this arrangement by mining the executive office of the president's DNS traffic and other data for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Donald Trump, the president. Just let all that sink in for a moment. There's a tech firm that maintains the internet service supporting the president of the United States. The guy who's the current national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, who just lost the election with Hillary, gets his campaign lawyer, Mark Elias, to hire that tech firm with the White House contract to hack into the White House to try and dig up dirt on the sitting president in an effort to show that the 2016 election was stolen by Russia. And that same guy, Jake Sullivan, is now running around hyping up war with Russia. How can we believe a word he says? Look at what he said in October 2016 when he was working for Hillary Clinton. This could be the most direct link yet between Donald Trump and Moscow. It raises even more troubling questions in light of Russia's masterminding of hacking efforts that are clearly intended to hurt Hillary Clinton's campaign. Oh, troubling questions about Russia's masterminding of hacking efforts to hurt the Clinton campaign. He burbled when at that exact moment, he himself was masterminding hacking efforts to hurt the Trump campaign by making up stuff about Russia. The utter shamelessness of it is just staggering. And now he's out there just this Friday going on about how Russia is going to invade Ukraine on Wednesday. Who knows where this will end up legally for Jake Sullivan, but there is no question, none at all, that he should immediately step down as national security advisor. And then look at his boss, Hillary. She's now plotting another White House run because it went so well the first time. Look at what she said about all this back in October 2016. Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian-based bank. Oh, apparently, apparently computer scientists uncovered. My God, have you ever heard such dishonest, disingenuous poppycock? 
You hired the computer scientists, you lying wretch. You hired them to make it all up. You spied on your rival. Then when you lost, you hacked the White House to try and prove your big lie that the 2016 election was stolen by Russia. You made it all up. So then you could run around for years saying this. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. And then you got all your Democrat cronies to spout your big lie. He lost the election and he was put into office because the Russians interfered. So do you believe President Trump is an illegitimate president? <laughs> Based on what I just said, which I can't retract. He's an illegitimate president in my mind. Folks, look, I absolutely agree. And of course, Hillary's criminal scheme to undermine our democracy was cheered on all the way by her servants in the media. Let's just start with this one in all its delicious, humiliating entirety. The biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my well, campaign. There's Leslie. no real evidence of that. Of course there is. No. It's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got I, caught. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes. And we can't put on things we can't no, verify. You won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied and, on my campaign. Well, we can't verify It's been totally that. verified. No. No, no, this is 60 Minutes. Leslie Star, 60 Minutes, what a joke. She's not a journalist, she's an establishment propagandist. They all are. Bogus claims of spying on the president's campaign. Trump's spy claims. Debunked conspiracy theory. People come to QAnon through things like 9-11 trutherism, the Barack Obama birth certificate conspiracy theory, the Trump spygate stuff. And now, today, when their entire narrative collapses and the whole world can see that what they've been saying is literally the opposite of the truth, that it was Hillary who did the hacking, that it was Hillary who did the Russian interference, how did the media cover it? On the Sunday shows today, George Stephanopoulos, ABC, zero minutes. Margaret Brennan, CBS, zero minutes. Jake Tapper, CNN, zero minutes. Poor old Chuck Todd. He was bumped by the Beijing Olympics. And NBC got to keep that genocide cash coming in. But how much time do you think he would have spent telling his audience today that everything he's been telling them about Russia and the 2016 election for the last five years was a lie? New York Times, nothing. Washington Post, nothing. Reuters, AP, nothing, nothing, nothing. They are so embarrassed they can't even begin to admit how wrong they were. But honestly, how can we have a functioning democratic republic when the media just buries information that contradicts its ideological narrative. Biden, family corruption, the origins of the pandemic in the Wuhan lab, the Johns Hopkins study showing lockdowns didn't work. And now this. America's establishment is rotten to the core. And that's why we need to keep fighting for the positive populist revolution. Let us know what you think at Steve Hilton X and at Next of FNC and share this message. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.